Good afternoon. So it's really, I'm really excited to have the opportunity today to be visiting and seated next to a man who has worn many hats in the ministerial field, that of missionary, evangelist, teacher, pastor, and exactly what we're going to be talking about today, which is uh, moving in the prophetic. Uh, how are you today, Pastor Emmanuel? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yes. Well, we're very excited to have the opportunity to visit with you this morning, or this afternoon rather, and uh, uh, I thought we would just kind of jump right into it. Uh, can you tell me, uh, Reverend Emmanuel, exactly what, for those people who don't, who aren't really familiar with the prophetic, you know, what, what, a, what a person who moves in the prophetic, what a prophet does, can you kind of explain that to people who may not really understand that thank you uh, let's start you know with uh, prophecy prophecy simply means to foretell to uh, predict something ahead of time and um, it is what our God likes to do in uh, I, the book of Isaiah 46 verse 10 uh, the Bible says our God declares the end from the beginning and there was a time God said to Israel gather your gods together let's see uh, which one among them can foretell can tell you the future so how God distinguishes himself from every other God in one and uh, in that area as well in his ability to tell us you know what lies ahead and the Bible is full of prophecies okay bold and uh, no prophecies that foretell uh, what is going to happen so when somebody is anointed is engraced is gifted to foretell you know to speak about the future ahead of time we call him a prophet mm -hmm. or a prophetic <coughs> vessel depending on uh, if he does that on a ministry level. And um, in the Bible, we have two categories of prophets. You know, the ones the Bible calls seer, they can see. And uh, that's how every prophet started, you know, in the Bible. They were just there to see. But a time came when uh, bad kings ruled over Israel. God started using the uh, prophets to also teach, you know, the Bible called them the, the uh, Nafi, that is, those that receive inspiration to prophesy and teach and point the nation or individuals in the right direction. So if you operate that way, you are called a prophet. Okay. And how long have you been moving in the prophetic manual? Since 1997. <clears throat> uh, that should be about 21 years ago. Oh my goodness! And how did it how did it come about for you? And how did you know that you had that gift? And um, I was a pastor in Lagos, Nigeria. I was pastoring the New Wine Assembly, which I founded, and I had one time invited a prophet, and um, I felt the prophetic grace came on me in that meeting. I've been operating as an evangelist, as a uh, teacher, uh, went into missionary school, and uh, now pastoring. So the man came and he was ministering. I felt heat on my forehead. I told him, he hugged me and left. Then after then, um, I will be ministering and I will be getting prophetic signs. For example, I will be preaching and my palms will eat up. And I don't know what that means. And uh, God did not say anything to me about that. Until one day the Lord explained to me, I have given, I have given you a prophetic grace. I want you to slow down, you know, being... Uh, an evangelist as well. You don't want to pray, miracle happen, people fall on the, under the power of God. You, you know, enjoying, 
you will enjoy you see the spirit of the Lord move. Mm -hmm. and I was doing that. I enjoyed just see God move without touching anybody. And uh, but God said, now I want you to, you know, I will be ministering, you know, talking to you about people. You have to slow down, listen to me, and bless them. So I started calling people up, and uh, it's either I will see a vision, or God will speak in my heart, or I just know. With that. Just know I can't explain that. Sure. So I started ministering prophetically, you know, to people. Yeah. 21 years, you know, running. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay. And by the way, we'll be getting more into uh, Reverend Emmanuel's uh, uh, a little bit more of his own testimony in future uh, in future uh, interviews. But today I thought we would talk primarily just about the prophetic and how it works and. One of the questions I have for you, Emmanuel, is um, how do you, what do you say to somebody who says, well, these gifts are, are not for today. They're, for, they're only for the days of back in Acts. What, what about uh, somebody who says the prophetic is not, uh, it's not possible or that type of thing in today? Oh, well, um, usually those who say that live in the United States, in Europe, in the developed world. So, where you have good Medicare, you know, uh, copters can come and pick you, fly you to the hospitals and all those. How do you say that to people who live in third world countries, who may not have any hospital nearby, who don't have any ambulance, they fall sick, and uh, it's either God help them or they die. Then you say to them, well, you know, God has retired from his work. He no longer help people. That is very silly. Nowhere in the Bible. One of them wrote a book on charismatic chaos. You know, the, the problem is this. Once you dislike something about people, you likely write them off completely, whatever they do. That's what happens. You understand? You know, and when you don't have something happening, in your own ministry, you can come up and say, okay, it's not happening here, therefore, it is no longer happening. The guy who wrote Charismatic and Chaos to disprove prophecy, healing, or any uh, move of the Lord today, they ask him, give us one scripture passage that supports what you say. And he couldn't give, the, the one he gave, he couldn't even... You know, quote it right. He said the Bible says uh, the apostles are the foundations of the church. The Bible did not say that. He said the foundation of the apostle. Jesus Christ is the foundation. So they say when, well, you know, towards the end of Paul's ministry, he stopped talking about uh, miracles. Who told them that Paul, you understand, is the gauge for the church? <clears throat> Where do you see it in the Bible that whatever happened to Paul, dictates what happened in Christianity. He was just one of the apostles. Yeah. You understand? Yes. He was yeah. one of the apostles. Mm -hmm. So they ascribe so much uh, uh, importance to Paul. Even the letters he wrote, he did not know these letters will become scriptures. He was just serving the Lord. In any case, Paul was in the prison. Was imprisoned towards the uh, end of his life and was writing letters to the churches they don't have a single scripture to back it up. Yeah. So, you know, when they say that, there, you know, is, is, I believe that doctrine is demonic. Yeah. Because it's not based on the word of God. How will God leave out something that important? Mm -hmm. If, you know, prophecy is for a certain time. I ask one of them, some of them questions. They can't answer. Mm -hmm. And once they don't have answer to your question, they change you know the question. That's what they do. Yeah, I say when prophecy uh, has ended, it is for writing the Bible. Number one, that's not true. Prophecy is not given to write scriptures. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know. So I ask them what Agabus did to Paul, who took uh, Paul's apron, tied himself, and say, "Hey, thus is the Lord, the owner of this apron. This is how it will be tied." Uh, in Jerusalem. Say, so how did that prophecy help scriptures? Mm -hmm. I mean, the writing of scriptures. You understand? Mm -hmm. they, you know, so, and I asked them, why is it that 
throughout the Old Testament, there are prophecies. Even the, the Old Testament, you know, ended on prophecy. Right? Mm -hmm. The same thing with the New Testament. Where do you see it there? The, the gift of prophecy, like Paul described, you understand, revealing the secret of people's heart. He said, if unbelievers come, you know, into your meetings and you prophesy, he will, you know, you'll be convicted of his sin because you have revealed the secret of his heart. How does that, you know, all about the writing of scriptures? So basically, uh, they don't know what they are talking about or the devil is deliberating, uh, deliberately using them. That's mm -hmm. my conclusion. Very good. Now, how can you, <clears throat> I'm going to go into asking you some questions about some, some personal experience that you've had with, with prophecy. But before I do that, um, with some examples, but before I do that, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how can you tell the difference between somebody who is a prophet of God and then a false prophet? Always, nobody is false for no purpose. Uh, usually, false prophets, you can easily identify them by their relationship with money. They profiteer. They want to profit, you know, make gains out of the prophecy they give. That's one way you know it. Secondly, you know, the they like the prophet side to you know promote themselves mm -hmm. and that's why you have false prophecy like people say jesus guy will come back as so and so did when he himself told the disciples only my father knows that i'm coming back so they do it to promote themselves and the way they handle prophecy you know at times they call people out say a uh, very secret thing about them openly for everybody to hear no decorum nothing now uh the third way of identifying them is this they don't you know respect the scriptures you cannot give prophecy that contradict the word of god you understand mm -hmm. so many times they contradict they just the prophecy they give you know contradict the word of God. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. It contradicts the word of God. They ask people to do things that aren't biblical. Mm -hmm. Okay? When a prophet has no respect for the word of God, you easily pick him out as, hey, this is not a genuine you know, prophet. At times, they go into rituals, do this, do this, things that you can't just, you know, get a single example of in the Bible. When you see people behave that way, then you know they are false prophets. Lastly, which is very important, they cause disunity mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. You cannot be a prophet called to point people in the right direction. And you are the one causing confusion. It negates the purpose of the prophetic gift. Mm -hmm. So a prophet, a genuine prophet, must do everything to make sure, you know, he promotes unity in the body of Christ. If you don't, then more likely than not, you are a false prophet. Okay. Very good. That's an excellent explanation, Emmanuel. So now can you give some examples of times where you gave prophecies and they came true um, for some individuals. Now I know you've you've told me some of them, but oh, sorry. Can you uh, can you tell our guests or the people that are watching a little bit about some of the experiences that you've had uh, in giving prophecies that came true? Uh, so many, so many of sure. them. <laughs> uh, let me think about recent ones. Okay, I've given prophecy to a lady who has two kids. No husband, no relationship, July of that year. And I said to her, this year, you will become a wife. And by December, she got married. Wow. Now, there was uh, another case in which uh, somebody, one of my daughters in the law said to me, I have a friend, she's losing her mind almost because she's of age, 
and there is nobody. You know, among the Africans, mm -hmm. you know, marriage is a big deal. You have sure. to get married. Yeah. You better get somebody or they will find somebody for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so I <laughs> called her and as I was praying for her, I said to her, Hey, thus says the Lord, go buy your wedding gown. Because you will soon be a wife, and your first kid will be a boy. Uh, I got to know about it when she was about to give birth to the second boy. She did it. She bought the wedding gown, and shortly after she got married, had a baby boy. It was when she was about to have the second boy that her friend that connected me on phone to her now told me, "Hey, your prophecy came to pass," and all those. I can't count how many people have prophesied to that they will have babies that they have. There was a, uh, a couple, they are pastors, they've been married for uh, over 17 years, mm -hmm. uh, for about 20 years, no kid. And I ministered to them, they will have twins, a boy and a girl, and I gave them the names. And when I gave the prophecy, the wife opened her mouth. I said, why? He said, a prophet told us we will have two kids. She did not say they will be twins. And she gave us the names, the same name you mentioned. When they have the babies about a year after the prophecy. I've prophesied to people who have court cases that should send them to jail. Court, say, yeah, <coughs> court cases? Court, court, court cases. cases. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, you <coughs> will be jailed. <coughs> If not for God's help, but the Lord says not to worry. You know, this case is going nowhere. And they were freed, Wonderful. completely freed. Recently, I prophesied to a woman that uh, your boy, your son, will be arrested very soon. And uh, he should be arrested because in the prison, the Lord will reach out to him and he will remember everything you've taught him. And that it is in the prison that he will surrender his life to Christ. Uh, that was Sunday. The very next day, <laughs> the woman's son was arrested. Really? <laughs> and sent to jail. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and when he got to jail, he called um, mom and said, Mom, do you know what? I am remembering everything you taught me. I'm remembering the Sunday school and all those have given my life to Christ. I'm a changed person now. So, so many uh, accurate prophecies that we have uh, given. It will interest you that I never call myself prophet. My title is reverend. Yes. People wouldn't just use it. <laughs> they call me prophet all the time. Right. Because of the prophecies I've given that uh, came to pass. There is a case that came to my mind. Um, two people came to my house and uh, they sat down. They've not said anything to me. And I told them, I said, hey, you, one of you, you, you try to go back to your country to go into politics? Uh, he said, yes. He said, the Lord said, don't. If you go, uh, you will get nothing out of it. They will eat you like potato, you know, so mm -hmm. you will not, it's not yet time, you know. And I also prophesied to him why God is speaking to him because it was not yet um, uh, a born again Christian, but that God saw some good aspect in his life and that's why God is speaking. Uh, very recently, uh, somebody called me for prayers in Maryland. And I told him, the Lord said, you are not drinking water. And if you don't drink enough water, you will soon have kidney stones. I think you are very close to it. So start drinking water. Then a week later, he went to the hospital. And the doctor told him, hey, start drinking water, a lot of water. We see that kidney stone is beginning to form. It's in the early stage. But if you drink water, you wouldn't develop kidney stone. He was so excited, they called me, oh, your prophecy came to pass. Yeah, this is what the doctor said to me. So, uh, prophecy uh, is about pointing people in the right direction. Yeah. About their lives. I cannot count the number of 
accurate prophecies. We've given her prophesied to somebody and told her the exact day she would give birth. They were married, no kid, and they were praying, you know, for each other. They invited me to come and pray with them. I told them and I told them the day they would give birth, birth to a boy. And it came to pass accurately. So those are the reasons people call you uh, prophet even when you don't mm -hmm. you know, use the title. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I, I, I would imagine just in, in talking that um, you must come under a, a, at least a modicum of persecution. Mm -hmm. And uh, that there must be a little bit of a cross that you bear being, a, being having that gift. Uh, in you know in such a in a world that is very uh, practical and pragmatic and only believes that what they see and stuff like that I do you find that there is some persecution that comes along with your gift a very big one number one if there is a ministry that the devil wish you understand is totally destroyed is the prophetic ministry why the biggest problem in the world today is confusion and that is what that gift targets pointing people in the right direction so it comes under the direct attack of the devil no other ministry you know suffers attack from satan like the prophetic ministry and you know you can divide the churches into two groups those who accept prophecy and those who don't accept prophecy at all uh, those who don't will persecute people like me as false prophets because they don't even believe in any genuine prophet uh, anyway. So uh, that's one. They, lay, they call us names, they label us uh, with furious uh, bad names. Okay, we also have prophets who give food to such attacks, mm -hmm. uh, who don't carry themselves very well, mm -hmm. who are not disciplined. You have prophets or just prophetic persons who join churches then behind the pastor they will organize house fellowships and uh, carry people away after them and after sometimes they leave the church and carry a lot of people away with them it has happened um, all over and all over uh, again and instead of pastors to recognize that they need to teach the people because there is no ministry that is as regulated as the prophetic ministry in the Bible. The regulation is massive to the point that, uh, you know, it is written in the Bible that let the prophet speak, then let others judge. You know what they say? Mm -hmm. Or instead of teaching the people, many, many of, uh, of these pastors just choose to, you know, silence uh, the prophetic gifts. Then you also have those who are. Uh, open their doors to you, they let you come in, you minister, and uh, the prophetic um, uh, ministry is, uh, uh, <laughs> is much needed in the church, and because of great things the Lord is doing, the congregation keep, you know, pressurizing the pastor to bring you back, bring you back, they keep reaching out to you, you know, directly by themselves until a time comes in which the pastors feel uncomfortable and say, hey, this guy is becoming too popular in my church. Um, you know, it's like so many people look up to him in the church. So what they want to do is that they stop inviting you just because of you've done nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong. But they see you as a threat. And uh, as a result, they stop inviting you, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, some of them will invite you back after maybe a long time, and uh, suddenly they invite you back. As a prophet, you must not have entitlement uh, disposition. If God uses you to bless people, don't feel you are entitled to anything. Mm -hmm. We don't expect to minister forever in any church. We, all, we expect that at one point, they find reason not to invite you again. So, but like Paul said, I coveted nobody's uh, silver or gold. A prophet must be able to say that, that I did not covet your money, 
I did nothing wrong. If you find a reason not to invite me again, you know, I'm at peace <laughs> with your decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, that's what we faced from church to church, particularly among the African churches. Mm -hmm. They do that a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just one big cross the prophet has to carry. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it. Now, we are a little, we're running short of time today, but uh, we're going to be having, this is going to be a series of videos that we do with Reverend Emmanuel uh, talking about the prophetic. Um, now, if people want to get a hold of you, Emmanuel, is that okay? I'm going to give some information here. Very okay. You okay. Know, they can call me. My phone number is public. It's okay. 507 405 2117. You can also get me on um, email. I have um, a website. We have a website. Acts1038.com. Acts, A C T S, 1038.com. And my email is tell uh, as in tango elephant lima lima at acts1038.com. So you can get across to me. If you have any questions or want to reach out to Emmanuel, uh, feel free to do so at the website that he or at the email and the website that he uh, he just mentioned. Again, that's acts1038.com and tell at acts1038.com. Otherwise, thank you. We'll see you next time uh, as we have uh, another opportunity to visit with Emmanuel Babalola.